Sorry, my system was hanging up a little bit there. Um, so this is a, this is a part in a, a whole webinar series that we're doing. Uh, uh, last month we did internet marketing for beginners, and we'll get started with competitive analysis here. And here's kind of the full list of ones that we'll be rolling out over the next several months. So a special offer for everybody that's attending today. Uh, we're actually going to offer uh, a free analysis. Uh, this is a three-page kind of a, a lighter version of the analysis, but we'll we'll give you some valuable things to uh, to take away. We'll audit two of your competitors. We'll I look for some of the what we call trust factors, and you'll learn a little bit more about this as we get deeper into uh, the the webinar itself. Uh, and we'll audit some of the major reputation sites uh, for the for yourself and your competitors. We'll take it. We'll do a social media off, uh, audit as well, um, and the deliverable will be a, a summary report uh, based on your business, your competitors, and how how you're competing in your marketplace. So if this is something you're interested in, uh, we'll send you a link after. Uh, the webinar, please fill out the form and uh, we, we'll set up some time to, to kind of do a uh, discovery call and learn learn a little bit more about your business. So the agenda for today, uh, we'll do I'll do a quick introduction around myself and uh, our agency, WSI Connect. We'll talk about the competitive analysis process. Um, as we get into the competitive analysis process, we always want to learn about our clients and their goals. Uh, we want to learn about their market opportunities, and then that's when we started to get really into identifying key areas for improvement, uh, and we'll talk about the conclusion and next steps. And we'll keep kind of a running list of all of the questions, so feel free to enter them into the chat um, as they come to you, and we'll take those all at the end uh, uh, at the end of the webinar. So introduction, so this is, I'm Luke Middendorf, I'm the Managing Director of WSI Connect. I've got over 17 years in the technology space, enterprise software, uh, and it's my experiences ranged from uh, small startups to large enterprises, uh, and working with a lot of different clients within uh, those ranges as well. I'm also an instructor for eSpace Score, which is a uh, volunteer organization of professionals that give out a lot of different types of business advice from accounting to marketing to uh, business operations, and I teach a course for them. Uh, around digital marketing. I have a large number of certifications uh, ranging from Google Analytics to HubSpot, which is a, one of the major industry players, uh, and a lot of technical SEO uh, certifications as well. WSI Connect was an agency that we founded in 2012. Uh, we have a very large range of clients. Uh, some of them are large in industrial. We've got universities, and we've got a lot of local businesses, um, higher education, stuff like that. You can see a few of the logos um, at the bottom, just kind of as, as a small sample set of some of our clients. Um, I should mention that we're, we're a Google partner uh, and we're part of the WSI Global Network. Uh, so within this global network, uh, there's about 800 other digital marketing agencies like our own uh, across the globe. And the reason we decided to become a part of the WSI Global Network is because it gives us a lot of leverage uh, in terms of creating direct relationships with folks like Google, Yahoo, Bing, HubSpot, SEMrush, a lot of these really big players within the digital marketing space. Um, and it also allows us to access resources that we wouldn't necessarily uh, be able to carry uh, as an individual agency. So for example, we probably produce anywhere from 40 to 50 blogs every single month um, across all of our different clients. And by utilizing a production center within WSI, we have access to uh, 10,000 different writers. Uh, so we can identify writers that have uh, a background in the types of industry and marketplaces that our clients work in so that we can create some very specific and unique content. Uh, within the uh, WSI network, uh, we are a part of the, the WSI Global Alliance, um, which allows us to get some very direct feedback from Google um, around the different things that are changing, especially within like things like paid search. Uh, and again, I mentioned we we do uh, we we um, have a, a large number of clients across a large number of univer uh, of um, uh, demographics. So you can see we've got Eastern New Mexico University, we've got Conco Companies, which is a gi gigantic concrete pumping company. Uh, we've got Montessori Schools of Fremont. This is um, an organization that has 11 different Montessori schools across the West Coast. Uh, we've got Herc, which is a um, uh, a career website for folks that are trying to find jobs within universities. Some of their clients are like Harvard University, Purdue, uh, Princeton, so really, really high-profile clients. 
What I'm going to do from for this uh, webinar is instead of using one of our clients because I don't want to uh, uh, share a lot of their kind of confidential information, um, especially for start, starting looking at weaknesses and strengths. Um, so what I did is I did a search within Chicago and we do a lot of work with Montessori schools. So I decided to kind of just pick out two, two local Montessori schools in Chicago. One of them will play the role of this would be kind of our client, our, our company, and that's this Magpie Montessori. So I'm going to, I'm going to address this competitive analysis from the viewpoint as if this was um, our client. And when we, we talk about our clients, we kind of talk about them as ourselves uh, because we feel like, you know, we, we, we really want to help them succeed. So we, we feel like we kind of become a part of their business. We come, become a part of their team. And as we go through, the, the competitor that I identified is this Montessori Academy of Chicago. So this will be the competitor, competitor to Montessori Magpie. So all the analysis that we do um, will be in comparison between Montessori Magpie and Montessori Academy of Chicago. So a little bit about our competitive analysis process. It's a, it's, it's a fairly in-depth process that we go through. Um, and the, the goal for this webinar is not necessarily for you to learn the complete process, but to learn kind of the most important elements that you could get started with right away. Um, and if we were to do this with a client, we would have a discovery call um, to really understand their business, their target markets, and their goals for growth. Um, and then we start to gather the data and build out the competitive analysis template. And I'm going to show you what that template looks like. Um, once we complete that with the template, we conduct our data analysis and we start to identify different areas of opportunities and present key recommendations to our clients. So the deliverables when we work on a competitive analysis, uh, they tend to be they're this raw data, this Excel spreadsheet, um, and the key findings, a, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and this will be a very modified version of what it would look like to get a PowerPoint presentation um, because we want to show you how to do this as we go through it as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a quick view into the Excel spreadsheet that we complete itself. So this template will be available to anybody that would like it. Um, we have it broken up into the different sections and I'll go, go over what each of these sections mean. Um, but you can see here we're gathering content. So the first part is just kind of putting some very, uh, just kind of defining, you know, who our, our client is and who their competitor is. We start to add in some, some business description data. Um, and in this case, the, you know, the, um, the, bit, the, the content that we found um, is, is very specific. They provide pricing. It's pretty easy to, to match program to program. Um, you'll see, for example, they've got infant tuition, uh, so our client, you know, would be $2,292 per month if you wanted to enroll an infant for five days a week at their program uh, versus their competitor. Um, it looks like they're a little bit more expensive, but um, if you take into account some of the wait list or application fees, it, it kind of works itself out. So when stuff like this is so close in terms of the di business description, we actually just kind of move on to the next step, which we'll see are the website trust signals. And again, I'll go into this in a little bit more depth. Uh, in the section that I have dedicated for website trust signals. But what we do is we follow, follow along this list and we just kind of identify whether or not these trust signals exist within their organization. And anytime that we use some type of third party tool, so for example, this mobile friendly, I've inserted a comment that shows you exactly where you can go to, to run this test. So if you wanted to figure out if Google considers your website to be mobile friendly, uh, you could follow this link. Um, and go directly to that. And any some of the tools that we use um, uh, to, to put together this analysis um, include a monthly subscription fee. Um, so anytime that I was using a tool to um, that had a, a cost associated to it, I supplied an additional tool that was either had a, a free trial or um, was a free alternative so that you can at least gather a subset of the data um, and get some, some of the information um, available. And so for anybody that's interested, we're happy to provide this template as it is, so you can use the information that we populated as, as kind of a guide. Um, and, but what happens with these templates is they become customized for the clients that we uh, provide. So there might be some areas where we would include more data. You know, if this was a, an extremely competitive space, um, we've got a section at the end that's technical SEO and technical website performance. And that site, that portion would be expanded um, if, if the competitors were doing a really, really good job. 
um, I think this this is a pretty good representation. Uh, the two clients that we the two companies that we chose are a pretty good representation of what we typically run into in the market space. Whether you're a local client, uh, a local business, a school, or um, even for a large enterprise space, um, if you're kind of in that startup high tech space, we would probably have to get into to more de detail around uh, the website performance because that that industry is where uh, we see the the most uh, online competition. So I'll switch back to the the presentation here. So the the core areas of analysis that we're going to look at, we'll start with market opportunity. Um, then we'll look at what we call website trust signals. Uh, we'll look at reputation management, SEO performance. So this is how well uh, the websites do within the search engines for Google, like Google search or Bing. Um, we'll look at paid search. So this is the, the paid uh, portion of the search engines. Uh, and I'll get into a little more detail why we hone in on each one of these sections um, so specifically. Um, and then there's some other digital marketing strategies and website technical performance that we we generally will um, analyze within a competitive analysis um, for those really, really competitive industries. Um, but I'm not going to get into a lot of detail around six and seven uh, within this presentation. Um, and so the when we approach this analysis, the 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 idea here is we really want to be able to you know not only identify your competitor's weakness, um, but we want to look at their strengths and we want to see how your company really compares um, to the to those competitors. Um, and that allows us to start to act, uh, recognize areas of improvements uh, in your, within your digital marketing strategy. And that's where we can shape your, help you shape your company's digital marketing strategy to stay ahead of your competitors. And so you'll be able to use this tool today to do the same thing. So look at your competitors, look at your, yourself, and then identify those core areas of improvements. So first, what we start with is you and your goals. So we've got Magpie Montessori. Um, the services that they offer are infant care, toddler care, full day preschool, unique, unique differentiators. Um, the children are deeply engaged in a learning environment that, that fosters creativity. So when we're, as we're looking through the different trust factors, what we're going to want to see is we want to see something um, that helps illustrate this unique differentiator. We want to see something that really shows that the, the children, um, their students are deeply engaged in this learning environment and that they really it really is fostering creativity in some way and so the core goal for magpie montessori and this is a new school that needs to increase enrollment in all of our programs and this is a even though montessori magpie is not our, our client this is really close to one of the the uh, clients that we had a few years back who's still our client but they're no longer a new school and they're they're running a very good wait list right now and so start with uh, the goal of the competitive analysis. So this is that top section of the template. You can see here we've got the, the core goal that we've put into the template. And the idea here is they need to increase enrollment across all of their programs. And it's, it's really essential that you define the goal in a unique dif differentiators before you get into this competitive analysis, because these are the things that are going to guide all of the things that you analyze and all of the opportunities that you identify. So business details, as I mentioned before, you know that we populated all this information, and what we got out of this is that there's not a whole lot of differentiation between um, what Montessori Magpie offers and what Montessori Academy of Chicago offers. Um, they have a lot of the similar programs, and in the programs that where Montessori Magpie uh, competes directly with Montessori Academy of Chicago, um, the pricing looks like it's pretty pretty similar. So there's not a whole lot to do here because the information is is pretty much equivalent. There's no real differentiator here. So let's let's take a look at market opportunity. Let's before we get into kind of the the real assessment around um, each of the the two schools, let's think about what does it mean um, to really put some effort into marketing. Is it does it make sense? Is it worth the effort? And so what we do here is we gather what we what we call keyword data. So the the column on the left here are different keywords that people could put into to Google or Bing. Um, and on the monthly searches, this is data that Google will give us back. So within the Chicago area, for example, every month there's 1,600 um, searches for the term Montessori, or there's uh, 590 searches for Montessori near me. 
Um, and this helps us kind of get kind of an idea of what, what the, the, the market awareness is and kind of the market demand. We can see that um, uh, every month that people are looking for, uh, uh, are, are conducting searches on Google that are very specific to the school that we're, we're representing. Um, so we know that there's there's some real opportunity here. And I, sh I should add that, you know, while these, these keywords are a subset of, of very good, well-targeted keywords that are very meaningful for Montessori Magpie, they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily represent the full uh, data set of keyword volume. This is just kind of a small sample set. There's a lot of other keyword variations that might be related to Montessori um, that could be represented. But I think this gives us enough confidence that there's some real significant market opportunity here. Um, so we want to make sure that we're optimizing everything in the right way so that we can really capitalize on this market opportunity. And so this is what it looks like right now. So we've got the keyword, we've got the monthly searches, and then we've got Montessori Magpie Google Rank. Um, so they, they, they don't have very good optimization in any way. So they're out of all this market opportunity, they're really not capitalizing on uh, any of it. They've got a little bit, uh, they've got a decent ranking for Montessori Infant Care, um, so they might get one a lead a month or every other month out of that. Um, but here we can quickly identify that the Montessori Academy of Chicago ranks quite a bit better. And within that template, we show you exactly the tools that we use to capture this data so that you can, you can replicate this search on your own as well. So now that we know that there's some significant opportunity here, we know that our client isn't performing well enough to capture a lot of that opportunity, we, stop, we start with the highest priority first. And the highest priority first is gonna be website trust signals. And the way we identify these is we just spend a lot of time looking at the, the two websites. So we, we try to figure out what's kind of the initial impression right away when you look at Montessori Magpie, what's the initial impression when you uh, look at uh, Montessori Academy of Chicago. And you can, you can see it almost immediately that there, there's um, a, a very significant difference in terms of the design. You know, Montessori Magpie, the, the child doesn't necessarily look all that engaged. They almost look sad. Um, they've got a lot of this black text, which is in capitalized letters. This is not good for viewers. Google doesn't like it. Um, whereas Montessori of, uh, Academy of Chicago, this kid looks like he's engaged with the camera, we can kind of get a sense for this kind of open learning environment behind him. Um, we can see immediately they're, they're accepting fall 2000 applications, uh, which is what this website's all about, making sure that they're, they're increasing enrollment at their school. And there's a very well-defined menu structure so people can access the information as they need it. So right away, we can see that there's some striking differences between the, the, two, the two schools. So this is what we do. We take the template and we start populating it with, with all of the information. So we start with the trust signals. So, you know, homepage, initial first impression. And that's that's kind of what I talked about a little bit. Um, local phone number. This is, this is probably the most important trust signal uh, that um, you can have on your website is having a local phone number. Um, so with Montessori Magpie, it's, it's only visible in the footer. It's way down at the bottom of the page. Um, on a mobile device, they actually have a little bit of a little banner uh, across the bottom of the page where you can tap the call. Um, so that's that. It's actually better uh, optimized on a mobile device than it is on a de desktop. Um, and this is a major weak point for Montessori Academy of Chicago because theirs is also only visible in the footer. So you can see here in the note sections, um, you know, our 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 note is to add a phone number. Um, Add a phone number to the right corner of the website so that it's clearly visible, and that's that's where people expect to see it. You know, we we have kind of a lot of these preconceived ideas around what it means to interact with a website. So we want to make sure that, you know, where we people expect to see the information that it's there, and we we expect to see that that phone number easily visible in the top right hand of the corner of the website. Um, and when we're on a mobile device, we expect to be able to tap on that phone or phone number and call it directly. So. That would be a kind of a key area for um, differentiation that we would we would call out. Um, you, you know, there's there's some kind of weird stuff that we saw in here, um, contact form. So Montessori Magpie, as we kind of got into their website and started analyzing it, we could see that they're they're trying to push tours. They want people to come in, um, and we know that you know they want people to uh, enroll for the fall semester based on the data within their 
their website, but they've got this weird thing where they got a wait list right, right in their menu instead of, you know, contact us or uh, schedule a tour. And the wait list sort of implies that um, uh, that the school's full and that, you know, the, 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 when the parent clicks on that, they go to wait list, there's a $75 fee to be placed on the wait list. So it's inconsistent with what, what their core goal is to have that wait list item there if they need to increase enrollment across all of their different um, uh, their different programs, so um, Montessori of Chicago has a, a has a much better um, method of uh, 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 contacting people. So that's that would be another differentiator. So before we do anything and anything else, this is what we do: we go through, we look through the the template here, we look at all the trust signals, uh, and we fill out all of the information as we compared uh, from our client across their, their three competitors. And this is something that any of you can follow along with, and it will give you immediate, immediate benefit um, uh, to your marketing strategy. And so there's a, there's a whole list of them. Uh, I'm not, I don't have enough time on the webinar to, to get into detail for each one of them, but I'll show you kind of a quick example. So. Um, HTTPS is now something that's that's really, really critical. It's something that Google has been telling us for the last two years that we need to really focus in on it. Um, and what that means is when we look at the website, Google's new, now, now most updated version of the Chrome browser, if they don't have uh, an SSL certificate installed, it's gonna say not secure next to their, their, their um, URL. So some of you might, if, you might even see this on your own website if you go to your URL with the most updated version of, uh, of Google Chrome. Uh, you'll see this not secure, and Google Chrome is the most widely used web browser um, across the internet. So it's really essential that every business has an SSL certificate uh, implemented correctly so that it, instead of not secure, it shows a little green padlock um, on this. Um, and what we also noticed is that Montessori Academy of Chicago is also not secure. So this, by, impl by uh, correctly implementing uh, an SSL certificate, Montessori Magpie could immediately have um, a differentiator with it, one of its website trust signals. So that's that's two things that they could do almost immediately that would be that are fairly easy to set up. Um, put a padlock up there with a by implementing an SSL certificate appropriately. Add a phone number uh, to the top right hand corner of your desktop version of your site. And you're already starting to nail down some of those really critical trust factors and starting to help um, differentiate themselves from Montessori Academy of Chicago. Once we nail down those uh, website trust factors, and it's, it's really important to get those completed first um, because it doesn't really make sense to get into things like reputation management or search engine optimization because all of these lead back to your website. So once you nail down those trust factors, then it makes sense to take the next step and look at reputation management. And the reason that we have reputation management as the, the second section here is, um, especially with something like a school, uh, parents will, all, will often do a quality check. After they land on the website, they'll go to something like Yelp or Facebook and see what other people are saying about the school to kind of get a better feel for, um, is this the type of school that, you know, uh, I want to take some time out of my day to go visit and see if it's the right fit for my, for my child. So within reputation management uh, template, we've got um, kind of the three main ones right here, especially that are important for schools. So we've got Google My Business, we've got Yelp, and then we've got Facebook. Um, and you'll notice that we have uh, multiple sections for each one. So within each, each reputation management site, it's really important to get verified um, because that becomes a trust factor for that, that specific uh, web page dedicated to, uh, for online reputation. Um, it's very important uh, that you have the right Google My Business category. You can see here that uh, Montessori Magpie is a primary preschool versus Montessori Academy of Chicago is primary Montessori school. And so this is one of the reasons that Montessori Academy of Chicago is going to perform really well in Google um, for anything related to Montessori. And Montessori is, uh, for those of that, you that aren't necessarily that familiar with it, Montessori is a specific method of uh, 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 of, of uh, running a school so that it teaches kids in a kind of a specific way. Um, and it, it really kind of fosters interaction. It, it 
their classrooms uh, range from have, have a couple of different age ranges within each classroom. Um, so it's a, it's a very specific method that's applied. And so if you're going to be a Montessori school, you're acknowledging that the Montessori method is one of your differentiators. So for Montessori Magpie to only be uh, categorized as a preschool rather than utilizing Montessori within the, the appropriate uh, uh, category within Google My Business is a mistake. That's something that they, they need to update. Um, and that's something that their competitor is doing better. Um, their, Yelp, their Yelp page is not verified. Their Facebook page is not verified. Um, so as we kind of look through this, we can see that Montessori Academy Chicago is, is really performing better in every stage of the online reputation management. And it's also important to note um, that reputation management, um, while these are kind of the three core sites, um, they can also be very specific uh, for different industries. So for example, um, as I mentioned in the, in the comment here, if you're within the hospitality industry, then you would wanna add TripAdvisor to your repu reputation management strategy, right? Both for verification and for um, the, the, the amount of reviews that you're getting. Um, and there's a lot of these. So you always wanna look at what are some of the industry specific review sites and add those into the template um, as they relate to your specific industry. Here's an example of uh, Montessori Academy of Chicago. So you can see here their, their Facebook uh, page is verified on the left where I put this red box around uh, their name here. That little circle with the check mark in it means that it's been verified with Facebook. Um, and so when you look at the two pages immediately, this, this um, uh, creates more credibility for Montessori Academy of Chicago because it's got that check mark, whereas Montessori Magpie's um, Facebook page does not. So SEO performance. So this, this starts to get into kind of more of the technical detail, but we want to talk about SEO because this becomes a primary method of uh, lead generation for a lot of these different businesses that we work with. And it, the reason behind it is because of these keywords. When we look at the monthly searches, we know that people are specifically looking for uh, the services that these two schools offer. And we can find this information across any, any type of industry for any specific marketplace. So it's just as a quick reminder, this is, this is keyword volume for people that live in Chicago. Um, this is how often people search for these specific keywords. And so because we know that this is such a powerful lead generation tool, it's, it's the most powerful lead generation tool beyond having the website uh, itself. That's, that's really kind of the core requirement we really wanna spend a lot of time on it and analyzing it. And so um, what we look at are a lot of the different factors within it, and that allows us to identify what is um, some of the key areas uh, that we need to improve. And so this is kind of a, a checklist that we include uh, um, within the site itself. And you can use an automated tool to find some of this information, but you can also identify um, this yourself. And a lot of the the sites, um, especially if you're using something like WordPress, um, there's plugin, there's free plugin called Yoast that will help you run this. You can run this on every single page to identify a lot of these key on page SEO factors. Um, and it's a lot around, you know, using an exact keyword in a document at least once. So Montessori preschool should be within um, the page, one specific page at least one time or broad keyword usage or accessible to search engines. Um, a lot of this stuff is very easy to find if you kind of just look through it, look through these elements on your site, um, or if you use free plugins, and we'll, we'll provide a list of some of those. Um, and what we come out of this is, for any of these uh, um, keywords like Montessori daycare, which is really important for um, Montessori magpie, to rank for within Google because there's some good search volume for that from people within Chicago. We want to create a dedicated page for that. And Montessori's website is just a single page with a little bit of content, um, which is not good for users. It's not good for Google. Um, it doesn't show their, their key differentiators. Um, and so it would make sense to create a very specific page around Montessori daycare. And then we kind of compare that to Montessori Academy of Chicago um, they've got what we call kind of a partial page for this. They've got one that they call a nursery, which I think is a is a is a poor term to use because there was there was no Montessori nursery, uh, no significant 
keyword volume for that search term, uh, but it's the closest thing that I could find to daycare on their website. So by creating um, a page itself for that dedicated keyword, Montessori daycare, they could immediately differentiate themselves from Montessori Academy of Chicago. And it would really give them an opportunity to represent their daycare. They could put a nice picture in there of the kids engaged in, in the Montessori activities, um, interacting with each other. Um, and if there's any kind of privacy concerns around that, you can always have the kids face away from the camera. So you take the picture um, from the back and you kind of gray out anything in the background or blur out anything in the background. Um, but, and then in the content, they can work in those unique differentiators of, you know, fostering creativity and having, you know, of kids being really engaged in the content. Um, so not only would it, would this page be really great for, for Google and rank really well for, uh, people searching for Montessori daycare within Chicago, um, it would provide really good content for the parents as well. So um, that's kind of one of the, 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 the assessments that we get out of that. We see the keyword volume, we see the keyword on-site factors, and then it helps us identify, you know, where to create new content within the site. And just to give you some perspective around how search engine, engine optimization works, um, so on the left here, you can see there's there's a search result. Uh, you know, 98% of uh, customers find a business using search engines. Um, so a very, very high volume. Uh, you can see the keyword up here that's entered. This first portion, these are these are the paid clicks. clicks. So this is advertising within Google. Um, this is what we would call paid search. Uh, every time somebody searches for a keyword, uh, about 10 to 20% of those clicks will end up on the on the paid ads. Um, this local pack here, this is where your, your site is verified within Google. We talked a little bit about this in reputation management, making sure that you have the right category selected. This is kind of the portion within Google where that's displayed. Um, that gets 40 to 50% of the clicks. And then you can see the kind of the classic organic uh, traffic below the local pack. Um, that gets another 30 to 40%. Um, and now the local pack doesn't always show up in the searches. Um, and if it doesn't, then we see organic usually gets somewhere between uh, 60 to 80 percent of the clicks and then only only kind of a small percentage of customers find a um, find a business using a directory so if you're getting calls from Yelp to, to advertise with your business it's much better much more beneficial to focus on creating creating great content on your site so that you can rank without rank, rank well within Google search results um, than invest in any type of uh, Yelp or any other directory type advertising um, the reason we focus on those is because the free tools that they offer, um, you can build a reputation page, you can gather reviews, you can respond to reviews. Um, so you can manage your reputation without spending any money, but from an adver advertising perspective, it's not very effective. And what it means when we think about different positions within Google. So this is where we kind of show the keyword ranks um, uh, at the very beginning. What I'm looking at here are the different rankings within Google. So if you're in that very first position within the Google uh, local pack, you'll get about 28% of the clicks. If you're in that second position, uh, which Montessori Academy of Chicago had a couple of uh, keywords that they rank second for, they get 14% of the clicks. Um, but then you can see it drops off very, very quickly. So Montessori Magpie, the highest ranking that they had was in the eighth position. So they might be capturing maybe you know, one to two percent of the total volume of clicks um, through to their website. So just with some small improvements, moving up through the rankings um, can have some very dramatic improvements, um, not only to their lead generation, but also to how they compete against their competitors. So paid search, this is um, the section that shows up above uh, the search engine, uh, b b above the local pack and above the organic results. Um, and this is where you pay per click each one. In this case, we don't. There wasn't a whole lot of data to capture. Montessori Magpie doesn't do any type of paid search advertising. Uh, Montessori Academy of Chicago they spend anywhere from four hundred dollars to a thousand dollars per month. Um, and we can get some pretty specific data around what people are doing from a paid search perspective. Um, and when we get into deeper analysis around uh, these um, different uh, the different companies that we work with, um, if they had, if they were doing really well on website trust factors, if they're doing really well um, within reputation management, 
um, then we would spend a lot more time on both search engine optimization and paid search. Um, but essentially here, this is something that we would we would talk to Montessori Magpie about. Um, if they have a large capacity, it makes sense to go after both paid search and search engine optimization, um, and then switch off paid search once they start you know, getting close to having close to full capacity. The other sections that we 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 would look at um, as additional areas for analysis. So as you're going through this and you feel like um, your website trust factors are nailed down really well. Um, if you feel like all of the other sections are nailed down really well, um, you can get into other marketing strategies. So identifying things like email marketing, identifying things like social media marketing. We talked a little bit about social media, but just at, from a reputation management standpoint, there's ways where um, you can promote things on social media um, as well. Display advertising, remarketing. Remarketing is where you know the, everybody that comes to your website um, gets up, gets a little cookie placed on the machine on their on their computer, so that when they go visit other um, sites that have display advertising, like some news sites um, or blogs, blog sites, um, they'll have the display advertising. You can display an ad from your business, um, and you know as we kind of analyze the different marketing strategies, if we're uh, identifying, there might be some really great areas for growth there. Um, or we'll look at technical performance. And this is really kind of one of the last things we look at unless we see something really egregious uh, within our clients, which is pretty uncommon. Um, but so this is, these are kind of the, the nuts and bolts here of the, the competitive analysis. I wanted to leave um, a good amount of time to see if there's any kind of questions. I'm happy to answer any kind of thing specifically. Um, and again, we'll, we'll supply you with the template um, and you're feel free to, to reach out if you have any questions as you go through it, because each one of these, as we, we mentioned, uh, needs to be kind of customized based on uh, whatever your, your target market, your goals, and your industry are. So with that, we'll go ahead and um, take a look at some of the questions. So one of the questions is around... You say local numbers are important. Does that mean we shouldn't use our toll-free number? And so this is um, this is something where you need to make a judgment call. If you're a single location, then you should definitely have a local number. Um, and if you're saying if you if you um, uh, if you operate within um, uh, the same kind of area uh, where it has the same area code, you should definitely have kind of one unified local number. Um, and the reason behind that is we, we tend to trust local numbers more than we trust a toll-free number. Um, and with, you know, now that we all have mobile phones, th there's no additional cost now to call long distance within the U.S. Um, so there's, no, there, there's not necessarily any value to having a, um, a toll-free number if you uh, run a local business. Now, if you run multiple locations, um, it would make sense to have a toll-free number. Um, but if you run multiple locations, it's also very important to have a dedicated page for each one of those locations that's easy to access that has a local number on that web page itself so that people could go, you know, specifically to um, the, the location that they're looking for that's nearest, that's, ne that's closest to them, um, and they can call directly on a, on a local line because there is just so much more um, trust involved. Okay, the next question. Does the process differ for different industries or kinds of companies? Service versus product or audience B2C versus B2B? Yes, it, it differs quite a bit. Um, if this was um, a, a, you know, an e-commerce company uh, selling products uh, from business to consumers uh, directly, uh, then we would have to get into a much more deeper much deeper analysis around kind of the business description um, and really identify, you know, what are the products that they need to, to move the most one, you know, either do they have the biggest inventory of those products or do they, um, uh, do they have a really high margin in some specific projects, products, um, and then looking at their competitors online as well. So e-commerce, you know, there's a lot of information available, especially, especially pricing information. Um, especially when it's business to consumer. So 
we will want to make sure that we we understand what our competitors pricing is we want to understand what our competitors um, shipping policies is do they they charge for shipping um, and what their return policies are so it, we, it would be a lot more in-depth detail uh, around uh, something like an e-commerce site and that's that's specifically why I chose not to do e-commerce because it, we would spend so much time um, on, on this webinar on the, the, the business analysis section um, that we wouldn't get into some of the other kind of core factors. But again, if you are, if you're a, any type of company that you are, uh, <clears throat> making yourself as easy to contact as possible is an immediate trust factor. So if you think about some of these big companies where you know maybe like Comcast or AT&T where it's really difficult to get to their customer support. They also tend to be some of the, the lowest rated companies. Um, but as we start to look at some of our clients that are very um, easy to access and they, they see customer support as a, as a good uh, differentiator for their business, um, there's a lot more trust there that we see. We are trying to hire people. What should we focus on to attract talent and keep them from going to our competitors? So um, digital marketing can be a great way um, to attract talent to your site. Um, and it, it, you know, job candidates are, you know, in, in themselves um, consumers. We, we kind of think about them as consumers as they come to the website. So if you think about, you know, if, if Montessori Magpie is trying to recruit a teacher, um, when we look at their website, and I'll, I'll just put up the, the snapshot of the website real quick so that we're all kind of thinking about this from the same perspective. Um, if you're if you're a prospective teacher that wants that's looking for a position um, at a at a Montessori school, um, you know you're going to have a, a, the same kind of a first impression of these uh, businesses, just like um, a parent would. So we can see Montessori Magpie is very is, gives a very as I mentioned gives a very different impression. Um, so any of the stuff that we think about <clears throat> from um, a potential customer perspective, we could also think about from a potential, you know, um, a new employee perspective as well. And all of those trust uh, factors that are attractive, attractive to customers are going to be attractive to employees as well as they kind of assess different opportunities. And so nailing those down is really important. Um, one of the things that we see is kind of a big miss um, with companies that are trying to attract new talent is there's not a lot of uh, content on the website specific to attracting new talent. So, you know, having a, a good career page there, having a, you know, kind of work environment um, description there um, are really, really important um, as well. So you can really kind of build these out. And we've actually, with some of our clients, we've taken it as far as um, doing testimonials. And we'll have testimonials that are great for customers, video testimonials that are great for customers, but also video testimonials of what it's like to work at that company um, and why that company is a great environment and what the career path is at that company. And those and these companies are doing a really good job of uh, attracting talent um, just by creating the right kind of content on their website for that. And then there's a lot more depth that we can get into around attracting a talent, attracting talent. Um, there's different things that we can do through Facebook, um, to tr try and go out and get in front of people who may not necessarily be in uh, the workforce, but if you start showing them um, targeted ads um, for the business that you're trying to um, attract them to, you might be able to catch their attention and get them to your website and uh, get them to start consuming some of this great content that you've created around what a great company it is uh, for them to work for. Um, so there, there, there's definitely some very, very powerful methods that people can utilize for attracting talent. Um, that you could identify during the, the comp competitive analysis. Is the location of trust elements important? Like top right for the phone number, is there an accepted list of best practices for website layout that speaks to this? Um, so yeah, this, the trust factors should be kind of where people expect them to be. Um, so we, we always kind of generally think that they should be in the top left-hand column. Um, and actually, we're, we're going to produce a blog po post um, uh, in August that really gets into a lot of depth around the detailed trust factors. And we're happy to, to send that out to, to everybody on the call uh, or on the webinar. Um, but, you know, top right hand corner, that's where most websites have them. So that's where we expect to see them. 
Um, so anytime you're thinking about where should a trust factor be placed, um, we should think about the websites that we go to the most um, and think about where they're currently placed. Um, so like a, a map uh, of the, the location, it's really common to see a map uh, of where the physical location exists within the footer uh, of the website. So we wanna have that there. Um, it's really common to see that menu structure kind of horizontal towards the very top of the page. Um, so it's very important to have that there um, because we don't want to disrupt, you know, where where um, people are expecting to find that information, and that makes it as easy as possible to find. Um, and of course, we'll we'll get into some more detail around that. Great information, but it looks like it would take a lot of time to gather, especially if you have multiple competitors. Are there shortcuts? Um, so yeah, yeah. So there is a shortcut to this. Um, the shortcut is starting with the highest priority stuff first. So um, you can break this up, and it doesn't have to be done all at once. Um, in fact, it does. You know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it all at once um, if you're implementing this yourself, um, because it is a lot of work. Uh, so the the you know the first thing is you know spend spend uh, spend an hour, you know, working with your team to clearly <clears throat> excuse me define your goals and clearly identify your differentiators. And that's, that's something that's essential for every business. And hopefully, hopefully almost everybody on the call has that nailed down. You know, where do we wanna grow? What makes us great, right? And those are the two, the two things that you really wanna focus on. Once you have those defined, um, that'll lead everything else that you're doing. So go right from there, right to web trust signal, website trust signals. Um, and focus all of your effort on those. And if you, if you don't want to do it for multiple competitors, you know, pick yours and pick another, your, your next closest competitor. I mean, we, we learned a lot just by looking at Montessori Magpie versus Montessori Academy of Chicago. By doing a comparison of these two sites, you, you can immediately identify some really great ways to, to improve your site and improve your content. Um, and if you're not sure who to pick, just go to Google. Uh, and that's what I did. I went Montessori School Chicago, and I just picked these two schools uh, uh, right out of Google. I picked Montessori Academy of Chicago because it ranked pretty well within the local pack. Um, and then I picked Montessori uh, Magpie just because I found them. And they were one of the only uh, Montessori schools um, in the search that I found that didn't have any reviews. So I kind of assumed they would be a, a new school and give us a lot of content to work with. So yeah, so definitely there's there, that's the shortcut. Go right, right for those website trust signals, nail those down um, as best as you can, um, and then you can come back to the other things. Then you can take the next step and do reputation management. And these two things are both things that you, you're most likely capable of doing uh, on your own. Um, so making sure that all of your most important reputation, you know, maybe you spend one month on website trust signals, and then the next month you move on to um, uh, online reputation. And nail those, nail those two down really, really well. Um, and then you can start getting into some of the other elements like search engine optimization and paid search. Um, and for any of those that, any of you that feel like it's a little bit overwhelmed by looking at all of the data that we're gathering, um, we have a systemized approach to this and we have tools that you can use to gather that data. Um, so it's not, so ho hopefully it won't be as overwhelming as it seems like as we're kind of getting into the, the introduction of this. You said you do more in-depth analysis for your clients. How does this intel contribute to their ROI, return on investment? Is it measurable? Um, yes, so we do do more in-depth analysis for our clients um, as it's necessary. The best way to measure return on investment, um, and this kind of gets outside of the competitive analysis, but is to make sure that you have Google Analytics installed on your website. I mean, if you have any, anyone has any questions on what that is, um, it's something that's free and it's very easy to set up. Um, feel free to reach out, just shoot me an email and we'll, we'll give you an explanation around what that is and how that can be implemented. Um, but what it does is it tells you all of the, it, it gives you the data on um, the amount of traffic coming to your website. And it'll tell you exactly, you know, what pages they're going to on your website, how much time they're spending on your website. Um, and it will also, uh, it also gives historical data from the moment that you implement it. So if you implemented it today, um, next month you could start, it would start capturing all the data today. 
And then if in September you start implementing changes in your website, um, you could measure month over month growth. So the amount of people coming into your website, um, how much time they're spending on the website, how many pages on your website they're looking at. Um, so it's really easy to kind of track the growth that this creates when you use a tool um, like Google Analytics. And there's actually some pretty cool stuff that you can set up within Google Anal Analytics where you can track conversions. You can track you know, how often do people you know, come from Google, land on your website, and then fill out a contact form, for example. Um, so it's really, um, it, 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 there, there's some really clear ways to measure return on investment. Um, but one of the easiest ways to do it would just be, today, just start um, asking people where they heard about you. Um, you, know, some, you know, some of it's gonna be word of mouth. A lot of the companies that we work with in the very beginning, um, almost everything comes from word of mouth um, because they don't have a strong online digital presence. Um, and especially with Montessori schools, um, word of mouth can be a very, very strong method of um, uh, attracting more people because your your customers are essentially doing your own um, marketing for you. Um, but you want to have multiple marketing channels if you're not meeting your capacity. So, you know, you want to ask, you know, when, when, when parents come in for an open house or they come in for a tour, just ask them. Ask them where they're coming from uh, or where they heard about your school. Um, and then, you know, uh, record it every time they come from any any type of lead source. Um, so if you're if they say we heard about you on Google, then you keep that put that in a spreadsheet and say in September we had 10 people that heard us about us from Google. Um, we had one person that heard it found us on Yelp, and we had three people that found us on Facebook. And then in October you you, you keep tracking the same metrics and you look for growth, uh, and that that will help you understand very very quickly um, whether or not your your efforts are paying off. Okay, I'll give a, a couple more seconds just to see if we have any additional questions there. Um, if not, we can always end, end a little bit early. Um, and of course, we're happy, we're happy to um, send all this information out. We, we'll send both the, the presentation that we viewed, we'll send the template. We'll leave the template populated so that you can see, you kind of use the information in there, in there as a guide. Um, as you go through uh, the different elements of the template. Um, and then, of course, if you're interested uh, in the analysis, uh, just sign up on, the, on the, the landing page that we created. We'll send you a link to that, um, and we can set up a call so that we can kind of discuss about, discuss what it'll take to, to, put, to the, put together the analysis. Um, and the goal for everything is just to make sure uh, that you have some actual items. You know, what, what are some things that we're going to identify some things to really help you uh, make some improvements right away, um, so, and things that are should be should be fairly fairly easy to implement. Let's see. Will you be sending the tool? Yes. What's your next webinar? Uh, the next webinar that we're targeting will be effective website design. Um, so we'll get into even more detail around things like website trust factors. We'll get into detail around using the right kind of imaging, the right kind of content, um, and the, there are different strategies that, that you can leverage within your website. Um, and we're targeting kind of mid-September uh, for that next webinar. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll keep everybody up to date on, uh, on the future dates. All right, so that looks like that's uh, the end of the questions there. Um, I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, you'll you should all receive an email from us with a confirmation, uh, but we'll also reach out to you. Uh, on, you'll receive an automated email from go to uh, go to webinar, um, uh, the kind of the thank you uh, for attending email. Uh, but we'll follow up uh, with a link to the to the landing page, um, uh, and we'll reach out directly for that. So I appreciate you all taking time uh, to to view the webinar, and uh, we'll see you we'll see you next month.